something I wanted to say to your listeners is like, there's not one way to do this. I feel like I was taught one way to do it. It didn't feel entirely right for me. Like you said, I'm not going to just be like 15%, 18%. That's such a huge jump. Hey there, CEOs. My name is Brandi Gar, and I am on a mission to help you, the wedding industry entrepreneur, to ditch the overwhelm and to build a profitable business that you love. Welcome to the Wedding Pro CEO Podcast. Have you ever resented a client simply because you feel like they have completely changed the scope of their event and now here you are spending so many more hours planning and toiling over their details and not getting paid for it? Yeah, me too. And in today's episode, I'm talking with a special guest, Nicole Mower from Nicole Mower Events. She is a planner out of coastal Maine, and she has mastered the art of percentage-based pricing. But she has only been doing this for a few years, and she's been teaching my CEO group a little bit more about the different ways that you can implement percentage-based pricing in your business. Because guess what? You don't have to jump right from flat fee to 18%. That is very uncomfortable for many of us. But Nicole tells us about how she baby stepped from flat fee into a couple of different pricing models for percentage-based pricing so that she would feel less resentful when clients change the scope of their wedding and to have fully transparent pricing with her couples. You guys, I absolutely love this episode because as planners, so often we don't get paid for the work that we put in when we charge a flat fee because clients don't necessarily know what their wedding is going to be like when they get engaged. And so they really need us to help guide them throughout the process. And using a version of percentage-based pricing is the perfect way to do that. So if you've considered percentage-based pricing, but you still have a hard time selling it, I'm telling you to tune in to today's episode because it's going to be a good one. Nicole, I am so excited (laughs) that you are here today. We are going to have so much fun. We always have so much fun when we chat. So thanks for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Okay. So Nicole, you've been in the CEO Mastermind group for a year, right? Since it started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the things I think I love most about our group is that we can teach each other. Like there's so much value in learning what someone else is doing and how they're doing it really well. And you have really mastered the concept of percentage-based pricing, which I'm so excited to talk about today. And Mm -hmm. you've been teaching our group about it too. It's something I've really been trying to get better at. I'm not excellent with it, but we're getting there. And so I can't wait to talk to you a little bit more about that. But before we dig into our topic, will you just kind of tell everybody a little bit more about you and Nicole Mower Events? Yeah, I'm located in coastal Maine. We just celebrated our 10 year anniversary, which is really exciting. And I feel like I was a little bit slow to grow my team because it was scary. But I found you on Clubhouse back in like the 2020 pandemic. That's how I hired you as my coach, became part of the Mastermind Accelerator group. And now I have a full-time employee bringing on another person soon. So it's been really cool, the growth that I've seen in the past year. In addition to my planning company, we also manage the sales and operations of three local wedding venues. It's so crazy, all of the things that you're doing. And if you guys have ever heard me talk on the podcast about one of my students who has like the best profile statement on Instagram. I love Nicole's for her company on Instagram because every time I see their weddings, they're literally like on the edge of a cliff. It's so bizarre where her weddings are. And so what is your profile statement, Nicole? Do you have it memorized? Because I just put you on the spot. I know, right? I have it right here. It says experts at curating and crafting elevated experiences at logistically challenging locations. Yes. I love that too, because especially in the area that you're in, there's a lot of logistically challenging locations. Like just seeing Nicole's profile immediately. And if you're a couple looking for a planner that understands how difficult your venue is going to be or wherever you've chosen to get married in coastal Maine, immediately you know that Nicole's team can handle that. Exactly. Thanks. That took me a while to come up with. Well, let's dig into it because percentage-based pricing is, oh, it's a hot topic. And um, I've actually hosted clubhouse rooms on it. Every time we say clubhouse, I feel like we're talking about 1952 somehow, but I know. which is so <laughs> terrible. But um, I'm glad it feels that far away, though. Like, put that in the past. That Bye. is true. That is true. Yes. So, um, but I've hosted rooms on clubhouse about it. We've had other guests on the show 
talking about percentage-based pricing, but one of the reasons I specifically wanted to have you on is because one, you've only been doing it for what, a few years and yeah, you also kind of stepped into it. Like you didn't just go like flat fee to 18%. You kind of baby stepped into it. So I'm going to kind of let you take the reins here for a little bit and just tell us one, what made you make the switch and then the different ways that you did it. And then we can kind of unpack some of that. Yeah. I think like a lot of planners, I got started just with doing coordination only packages. So obviously that's going to be a flat fee. Yeah. It's, you know, similar amount of hours, each package, you kind of know what you're getting into. And then as I progressed into like a partial planning package, I still kept that flat fee learned more, started doing full planning, did flat fee because that's all I knew, but it was a total guessing game. Like I'm just like, okay, your wedding's in a year, year and a half. You think there's, it's going to look like this. I don't know. Let's say, yeah, $7,000. Yeah. That sounds great. And then you start working with a client and they either increase their guest list because one side of the family wanted a bunch of people to come or in the case of like tented events, you really have no idea how many vendors you're going to have. Maybe they decided to do four food trucks and a coffee cart and a dessert baker instead of one caterer to handle that all, which is more work for us. And I started getting a little resentful and which is a strong word to use, but it, it's like I got into this business because I want to help people and it should be celebratory and I want it to be fun. But it started getting like I just felt like I wasn't being compensated for my work. And yeah, so obviously something had to change. And being in Maine, there weren't any other planners in my area that I knew of that was charging percentage. So it was definitely really scary to even contemplate taking that jump. Mm -hmm. I hear a lot of people like in our coaching program say like, I'm the only person in the area. If I charge percentage, like, isn't that going to be like a bad thing? But for me, when I actually ended up making the jump, I think it made me stand out in a good way because I knew what I needed to do in order to be able to give my clients the effort and the attention that they deserved. Mm -hmm. Originally, I took this percentage-based course and something I wanted to say to your listeners is like, there's not one way to do this. I feel like I was taught one way to do it. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel entirely right for me. Like you said, I'm not gonna just be like 15%, 18%. That's such a huge jump. Yeah. So the way I started it is I did a flat fee plus a percentage and it felt a better, like the percentage I started with was just 10%. So it was a little bit smaller and the flat fee, the minimum, and then the percentage on top of that is basically to allow the fluctuation of the scope of your event. And so the flat fee is similar to like your event management package or was it higher? No, probably similar to the event management package. Okay. Um, and sometimes it would change a little bit based on like the location of the property or if like they had you know, if the ceremony was offsite uh, and the reception was somewhere else, like maybe I would increase it a little bit. So it wasn't always the same, but yeah, probably, probably like the event management package. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. Okay, cool. So you started off doing that. And then after you kind of got your feet wet in that, was that an easy sell for you? Did you feel like you had any major hurdles when you started that? So no, at first it felt better to sell it like that because I could explain to clients that this was honestly a more fair pricing model for them. Mm -hmm. Instead of me just guesstimating and how many hours I'm going to work on their wedding or what the scope of their wedding is going to be. And then possibly halfway through being like, hey, we're going way over to what we talked about for scope wise. Like here's another kind of made up number on like the additional <laughs> charge that it's going to be. Yeah. Because like those conversations kind of happen too. And that's not fair. So anyway, I would kind of sell it to clients like that. Like this is a lot more fair. We're super transparent. Mm -hmm. You know, from day one, you know, what the minimum might be. And mm -hmm. then you're going to see as you book vendors, like, okay, you're going to book $3,000 DJ, then add $300 of that as a production fee, which is what I would call it. Okay. So there was no surprises. It was super transparent. Yeah. And people seem to understand it. It's kind of like how interior designers work. It's how general contractors work. Yeah. I'd use those as examples sometimes and people, people seem to like it. Yeah. I, it's so funny to me how we don't question it at all for a contractor, for an interior designer, for so many other, honestly, even for your real estate agent, right? Like your real estate agent's getting a percentage of what you sell your house for. And it's not any different to sell a house for a million dollars than it is to sell one for half a million dollars. So, but they get more, right? I find it interesting that it's so difficult for us to adopt this same model. So after that, you ended up changing to what? After a little while, I started being uncomfortable with the flat fee price for some reason. Like I didn't like it was flat plus percentage. I don't, I don't know. It just kind of was a natural progression, which is good. 
I felt like maybe maybe my clientele changed a little bit. Mm-hmm. I felt like just moving to a straight percentage, it would just make more sense. Okay. So I moved to, I think I did 12% first and now I'm 15% okay. with a minimum. So it's like, regardless, your wedding is going to cost anywhere between 15000 and 25000 whatever the minimum is. Again, it still does change a little bit, which we'll get into like yeah. the venues versus a tented wedding at a private residence on an island. Mm-hmm. Minimums are going to be different there. But yes, yeah, so it's a minimum plus a percentage, okay. which I mean, I feel really good about. And once I started feeling really good about selling it, clients feel good about it as well. Yeah. In the beginning, when I was a little bit nervous and a little bit unsure, I would get more questions. But I feel like something that really helped me actually is I would do like mock sales calls with vendor friends. Um, I was in a sales class years ago when I worked for a tent company as their sales consultant. And it's kind of goofy, but it really does help, especially with vendor friends. They're going to know the kind of questions a bride or groom might ask you. So I think it's good to practice that. Yeah, I agree 100%. In full transparency, I am not great with selling percentage-based pricing. My team isn't, and I'm not either, though we have finally gotten to a place where we feel like the flat fee plus a percentage, that's kind of our hybrid model. So ours is more like, here's our minimum, and then we give them a little bit of a buffer. So if they go over, they just want to upgrade their chairs or something that doesn't really count. But then if they go over a number we put in their contract, then our percentage is going to kick in. It's almost like an insurance policy, right? So I'm in Mm -hmm. Orlando, and most of our weddings are outdoor, but they're at venues, venues that have bathrooms and running water and power and tents are put up every single weekend. It's pretty turnkey, if I'm being honest, versus yours. Let's talk a little bit about that because you and I have gone back and forth a little bit where I'm like, one of the pushbacks I've gotten from clients is, well, I don't understand if I upgrade from a call bar or well bar to a call bar or, you know, whatever, to the premium package bar it's still just a bar. So like, why do you get paid more because I upgraded? Or why do you get paid more if we do filet versus chicken? So I know that's a common pushback. Can you tell us kind of your thoughts on that? Yeah, like you and I have talked about, it's common. I, I've never received that pushback. Which is so bizarre because, to me because I've received it multiple yeah, times. But I get it. Like I, you know, there are venues up here where um, I could maybe see that question, but especially if it's tented, I'm sourcing their vendor for them first of all like they don't have catering and bar Mm in-house so we have multiple bar training companies multiple catering companies some catering companies can do bar sometimes you want an outside bar service maybe you want a cute little like vw bus that people are serving liquor out of and beer out of maybe we need to do the full liquor order for them right which i often do as well so there's just so many variables i guess was what i'm trying to say Mm -hmm. with a tented outdoor event researching the vendors, reading the contracts, making sure they have ice. Oh my God. My first few years in business, people wouldn't bring ice. Clients thought they were going to bring ice. Bartenders thought the clients were going to bring ice. But it makes total sense if it's at a venue. It's it's kind of the same every time. And you also touched upon really quick, I just wanted to say that was that was the third pricing model that I was thinking about. It was originally like the flat plus a percentage like we talked about. Okay. Yep. Percentage only with a minimum which is what I'm doing now, yeah. or flat rate until you hit you know, $150,000. Once you go over that, it's going to be 15%, which mm-hmm. I think is a great hybrid as well, like a great option for people who are dipping their toes in. Yeah. And that is the model that we have. So basically when we're selling that, we just explain to the clients, we always, always, always have based our flat fee on a percentage. So that really hasn't changed on the back end. Mm-hmm. It's just in the past, the clients didn't necessarily know that. So We would estimate about how much we thought they were going to spend on their wedding. We would ensure that felt good to them. Yes, this is what we think your budget's going to be. They agree. Yes, that feels comfortable. And we would then base our fee on a percentage of that. The difference now is that let's say somebody comes to us and says they have a $100,000 budget. We're going to tell them our fee is $12,000, but... Now we're going to put in the contract that their fee is twelve hundred or twelve thousand dollars unless they go over one hundred and twenty thousand. So we'll give them that twenty percent buffer to do things like upgrade their bar or upgrade their chairs. You know, things that really don't change our scope of work a lot and allow them some flexibility. But if they go over a twenty percent difference, we're talking about a different scope of service. There's something major that's mm-hmm. changed. The guest count has changed. Another party was added. Something. And so 
it's very clear in our contracts now, if it goes over 120, we're going to assess a 12% fee. And that's really just for us because then now we have to staff more. There's going to be more hours in it, all of that, that kind of stuff. And I think you touched on this in the beginning, Nicole, when you said the word resentful. I know you said that sounds harsh, but I think a lot of people can resonate with that. That is how you kind of feel. You know, you book this great piece of business. You think it's great when you book it. You put it, you assess a fee that you feel like is going to be the right fee. And then the whole scope starts changing and and you feel like they're taking advantage of you when in reality, you probably should have charged appropriately so that if they needed more help, you were able to provide it. And so that resentfulness does sneak in because you're like, oh, well, now they're just taking advantage. When, but I really think that they just don't know any different in a lot of cases. Yeah, of course. And it's, and it's not their fault. Right. It's, most of the time they haven't been married before. They have no idea what they want. When right. they, it's like when you graduate college like, or when you go into college. Yeah. Like, what do you want to be when you grow up? People still, it's like, I don't know. Right. It's kind of the same thing with the wedding. They get engaged. I mean, if they're hiring a planner early on the process, yeah. that's wonderful because they should be doing that. They'll make less mistakes and save money in the long run. Yes. But that also means that like they have no idea what they want. So yeah, it's not their fault. And I think that's why a lot of people, a lot of planners end up doing more than contracted for because like they care about their clients and they want yeah. them to be happy. But then they're burnt out. Yep. A hundred percent. I love that you also said that there's really not a one size fits all. And that's not just with the different ways that you can price it. That could also be with what you include. So we were talking about venues versus tents. One of the things we've talked about in our group is that for, let's say, a venue that you work in all the time, all of the things are there. It's a pretty standard setup besides the design you could consider not including the catering in your percentage if you felt like mm -hmm. that was something that was, or that could be your base plus. So your base could cover kind of your event management and then your percentage could just be on design, right? Like all the design vendors, the lighting. And I love that you said too, a lot of times you don't know how many vendors you're going to be managing until, until you start planning. And all of a sudden you're like, why do we have 23 vendors here? You know, and it was supposed <laughs> to just be this- yeah standard ballroom weddings. I actually really, really love that pricing model as well for people dipping their toes in that don't work in logistically challenging, you know, venues like you do. Because to me, I feel like that's a really easy sell too. It's like, hey, we're going to charge you, you know, $4,500 as a base. That's our standard to manage your wedding. And then we're going to charge you 10% or 12% on everything we design. And I think that that's mm -hmm. a really easy way to get paid for what you're doing. So that's helpful. I love that. And also just to add that, just because this is, yeah, there are so many yeah. options, but like, I also feel like it'd be fair to be like, okay, yeah, I work at venue A all the time. I know it like the back of my hand, mm -hmm. I charge X number of dollars flat for this venue and 12% for everybody I need to help you bring in. So like, yes, for design for sure. But like even for photographers and yeah. video, because you're not just randomly picking somebody and this is good enough. Like if you're a good planner, you're going to be reaching out to people that you think are a good fit for your client, both in terms of personality, design, mm -hmm. style, budget. And then you're going to find out if they're available. You're going to review the contract for them. You're going to answer the questions back and forth. So I just want to throw that out there too. Like, yes, just doing a percentage off of design is one way to do it. Yeah. But I do think like photo, video, music is also, you, you can include it if you feel like you're putting the work in and you deserve to be paid for that. Well, and that's an interesting thing. I'm glad that you mentioned that because we have a wedding right now where I've spent hours and I, I actually mean like ah, worse going back and forth with the photo and video team I, and honestly the DJ. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. Like I've spent so much time on it and it's necessary for this wedding. It just is. And I'm happy to do it. But I do understand now why we should have charged a percentage on all of their vendors because it's just such a logistically challenging day that we just have gone back and forth so many times with the vendors on timeline and, and logistics and load in and all these things. And you really do. Mm -hmm. I mean, guys, we talk about all the time. Your time is money. You've got to account for your time. And this helps you to do that. Nicole, I want to talk about some of the pushbacks that you may have seen. I know another one that I feel like I've seen us get is, you know, well, what would prevent you from just giving us like suggesting all really expensive vendors. Mm -hmm. And you had a great answer to that in our group. So I'm excited to hear you. I know. I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to remember it exactly. But yeah, like I want to work with couples who trust me. Yeah. So if somebody's asking me that question, 
uh, it's just a little bit of a red flag for me because that means they don't trust me. And that would be really disappointing after being in business for 10 years. I work really hard to have like a strong social media presence. A lot of my couples come to me from vendor referrals. I have tons of reviews. So I want to work with couples that trust me. So I, I'm never going to do that to somebody. And I feel like that was kind of my answer in our coaching call. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. 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 Luckily, when you get a little bit more established in business, you can pick and choose your couples and we are there. So mm -hmm. I would probably just tell that person, I'd be honest and tell that person the same thing. Like, yeah. I'm not going to do that. And I, I feel like before you hire any vendors, you really need to make sure that you trust them. We're on your team. We're on your side. The whole point of hiring us is so that we have your back. So I would never, I would never do that. Yeah. And I agree with you. And it's so interesting even just to listen to you answer that question here, because I feel like with any kind of sales, not just percentage based, but really anything you're selling at the end of the day, you have to be so confident in what you do and what you bring to the table, because if you're not, you're not going to be able to sell it. I think that was the biggest challenge for us in the beginning was like, well, it's not really feeling right. But I love that answer because you're like, I'm good if you book or don't book, but I only want you to book me if you trust me that I would never do that. Mm -hmm. Like I have a reputation that should show you that I would literally never do that. You take a lot of time to nurture relationships in your industry so that you can provide the best vendors all the time for our clients. So I, I love that answer. It's like the most honest answer. It's like, well, I just wouldn't do that. I wouldn't have the reputation I have if I did. So what other pushbacks have you gotten? Are there the same things that come up over and over again? In the beginning, it was a ton of people wanting the flat rate. Like okay. they were, they didn't like the variable option. They yeah. were like, well, we talked to all these other planners and they're all flat rate. We're more comfortable with that. And that was when I was honestly one of the first planners doing this in my area. And I definitely lost a lot of clients to other people that were charging flat. And I think that's probably why I ended up doing like the smaller flat plus the percentage because I felt more comfortable selling that. But then it's like, it's not just a sales tactic. It gets 100% truth that right. I feel like this is more fair for clients. They they know what they're getting into. People that are booking full planning packages usually have a larger budget. Mm -hmm. So they usually have more flexibility, which is why the scope changes so much. Like this is a completely different client than someone who's booking event management mm -hmm. or partial. So the listeners that are hearing this, like if you only work with event management packages or clients, you might be a little confused. When you talk about ideal clientele, these are all different clients. I was getting some pushback on the flat rate for a little bit until I felt more comfortable and I understood why percentage was honestly more fair and better. And then now, to be honest, I really don't get pushback. If people don't work with us, it's because our minimum is too high or because they found another planner who's maybe more familiar with their venue or their location, or maybe they like connected with somebody better, mm. which is great. That That's how it should be, I think. Yeah, I agree 100%. I think a lot of the reason the pushback is there is because of that lack of confidence. They're listening to you and mm -hmm. they're like, I mean, I don't really get it. Like, And, and you're kind of like, I mean, I don't either, but this is what I think I'm supposed <laughs> to do. I have literally yeah. been on a sales call and felt that in my soul. You know, I'm like, <laughs> me um, too. Yeah. yeah. But once you do get more comfortable with it now, it was so funny because the other day I took a sales call for our team. It was the mother of the bride. It was full service. And I said, you know, uh, it's 12% of your budget, which means for your wedding, it would be X, Y, Z, you know, blah, blah, blah. I explained the whole thing to her. And she was like, oh, wow. So do you always charge the percent? Like she was so shocked by it. And I was, I didn't even flinch. Like I was like, yes, absolutely. And here's why. And it really does feel more transparent for both. And having now gone, I'm doing construction on my house, which if you follow my stories, you guys know it's complete chaos in my house all the time. But I love that when we do make changes with our general contractor, like I don't feel guilty about it because he's going to get paid for that change order. Like he constantly hands me change orders <laughs> and <laughs> I don't question it because it helps me not to feel guilty and think I'm pestering him. And it helps him to be a little bit more open to, sure, if you want to add that, that's no problem. Here's how much it's going to cost. And so I really do feel like it's very similar with a wedding. Like we thought we knew what we wanted in this addition going into it. But now as we see it, the walls mm -hmm. go up, we're like, what if there was this here? And what if there was that there? So I think this it's very similar with a wedding, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You're definitely going to lose people in the beginning. Yeah. So I think, I mean, you got to practice too. Yeah. So practicing on 
inquiries that maybe aren't the best fit for you anyway. So that if you lose <laughs> it, it's okay. Or practicing on people who don't even want souls and like True. they just want you for event management because like you just need to get the words out of your mouth so that it stops being so sticky. Yeah. Also, I think practicing now is an amazing time. Like we're in November, we're going mm -hmm. into engagement season. So if you lose some clients over the next few weeks, yep. it's fine because more inquiries are going to keep coming in. And it's okay if you lose a few because you want to make sure that you're getting paid the right amount because what you're feeling right now in busy season, make sure we don't have a repeat year of that. Mm -hmm. Don't let yourself get into this spiral again where you're selling yourself for too little, you're overextending your hours, and now you're going to end up getting fried and burnt out in your business. Like, don't do it. Charge what you're worth. Charge what you know you can provide. And then take fewer clients <laughs> or, or grow a team, one of the two, right? I think the only other one thing I would want to give people tips on, because I, I get this question a lot from planners, is like literally how do they execute it? So I get paid in thirds. I mean, there's multiple ways you can do it. So 5,000 deposit. The second would be 5,000 at the halfway mark, unless I notice the scope of the event has drastically changed. Mm -hmm. Let's say now they're at um, 18,000, just to make the numbers easy. Then I would yeah. have asked for 6,000 at the second way, like almost like half of what the balance is. And then I do the final balance two weeks out, which means even if a venue or a caterer or somebody's like, oh, we don't need five numbers till two weeks out. I tell my clients they need 30 days out so that I have time to make sure to get the final invoice. I can crunch the numbers mm -hmm. and that I can send an invoice. And sometimes I don't get paid till a week prior because mm -hmm. I'm still like figuring out the numbers. But I think that's important. Like just bump up everybody's payment schedule a little bit so that you can reconcile all those numbers and figure it out. Yeah. The executing that payment schedule, I'm glad that you brought that up because that does get asked a lot is, well, then how do you know how much to charge for each payment? The client should have some idea of what you're going to make from their wedding when they book you, right? You've got some scope of a budget, whether they have one, you mm -hmm. at least have some idea. And so really creating your payments based on that and then adjusting as you see fit. I love that you said too, that if you see that the scope is changing greatly, then you'll add some into that second payment. There's nothing worse than them finding out at that last payment that they all of a sudden owe you still $15,000. So that's a great idea is to add that in as well. And then mm -hmm. can you talk about how you track it? You do a really good job of that. Yep. So I use IELTS Planner, but I feel like it could be done on anybody's client software, basically in the budget section where I'm tracking all the other payments. Every time we add a new vendor, if we added the DJ for $3,000 for easy math, I'll say 10%. Under my name, I'd put production fee of DJ, $300. So if the client's looking at this at all, they wouldn't be surprised with their final balances. But like you said, it does stink to have like a huge bill two weeks prior. And honestly, I need to get paid right, too, right. which is why I'll increase the second payment. Uh, I just keep track of production fee of band, production fee of caterer. And I put little asterisks next to the vendors that will fluctuate based on RCPs. So the florist, the caterer, rentals to remind me and the client that that number is not completely final until mm -hmm. we have those numbers in. That was actually really eye-opening for me because we have what I think is a great budget spreadsheet and we track all of our clients' spending. But because we weren't doing percentage-based pricing for so long, we really didn't have a great way to track our fee if it was going to fluctuate. And so the production fee of just each one is brilliant to me. I love that. I think that's so, so simple. It's such an easy way to do it. Like you have said from the beginning, it's the most transparent thing for the client. Like mm -hmm. they can see it as they go along. It says it right there. Super, super easy. I love that. Okay, Nicole. Well, this was amazing. I think it was so helpful. I genuinely feel like at any stage of your business, you don't have to be working in six-figure weddings to institute this model. You don't have to have a $15,000 minimum or $20,000 minimum. You can have a five, six, seven thousand dollar minimum, but using that percentage based, however you do it, really just gives you that insurance policy that if the scope of the wedding changes, that you're going to be compensated for it, and that the client can feel free to make that scope change because you both agree 
to the terms up front. Nicole, where can everybody find you so that they can find out more about your company and watch all of your crazy weddings? Probably Instagram is the best and my handle is at Nicole Mower Events. Awesome. Okay, well, I am gonna link that in the show notes. You guys can go all check her out, check out her profile statement. It's one of my favorites. And then watch Nicole's team execute these amazing, amazing weddings in logistically challenging locations. <laughs> Nicole, thanks so much for being here. This was awesome. Thanks, Brandy. Thanks, Brandy. 